and punctuality. If the sound service starts at 9.30, it is a reference to the angels and to God to be cruising in at 11. Sound service starts when? 9.30. That's a period of sound. We're going to be having a period of sound service and prayer, praying for the outpouring of the Spirit of God. So every morning, Sabbath, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, down to the next Sabbath, uh, Sabbath, from Sabbath, July 30 to Sabbath, August 6. Every morning our sound service starts at 9.30, goes from 9.30 to 10, sound service and prayer. Lecture one is 11 o'clock. Remember when we are at camp, we are at camp, so there's no devotion, Sabbath school, divine hour, is lecture one, two, three, okay? And uh, lecture one, sorry, lecture one will be at 10 o'clock. So, sorry about that. Lecture one at 10 to 10.45, lecture two, 11 to 11.45, and ele lecture three, 12 noon to 12.45. Three lectures in the morning, then the luncheon break. Then the afternoon session will be on Zoom. We have a 3.30 to 4.15 prayer and praise session. Prayer and praise session. Prayer and praise and we want to be on time on Zoom for that as well. Lecture 4, 3.30 to 4.15, that'll be on Zoom. And now uh, an important feature of this camp, we'll be doing our camp book in group study. So on every afternoon on Zoom in groups, most likely groups of 10, uh, from 4.30, the Sabbath will be 4.30 to 6.30, the other evenings will be 4.30 to 5.30, We'll be studying our camp book in group study on Zoom, studying our ideas. The lectures will be here in the morning, but the studying of the camp book will be uh, in group study in the afternoon. Night session, 7.15 to 7.30. Uh, <clears throat> of course, starting off with a, a night session song service, and then the night lecture, 7.30 to 8.30, uh, from Sunday right through to Friday night. Our closing ceremony will be on the last Sabbath, uh, August 6th. That will be after sunset, 7.30 to 8.30. So next Sabbath, we'll be giving out the programs with completely corrected and so on. And the camp books as well will be given out. So our camp begins in full flow, net Sabbath. Three lectures here, face to face, and broadcast on YouTube. Then the luncheon period, then the prayer and prayers, then the afternoon on Zoom, including our very important group book study. We'll be divided into groups on the Zoom to study. So pray for the camp meeting, and please come out for the camp meeting. Those who can't come out can follow on YouTube or Zoom, but do not miss the camp meeting. Either do not come here and miss it, or stay home and miss it. Uh, camp meetings are important. Elder Leacock will be talking about the preparation for camp meeting this morning. And this afternoon, Elder Rangers will be talking about the importance of camp meeting in terms of the times to which we've come, consolidating the truth, advancing in the truth, praying for the Holy Spirit, and being ripened and perfected for the very soon coming crisis. Camp meeting 2022, don't miss it. I thank you.
now have our item of special music. The Sabbath law. Good morning to everyone. The songwriter in this song is saying to is saying to the entire world that the Savior is waiting to enter your heart, your personal guide throughout your life. There are a lot of people, like the songwriter says in this song, that procrastinate and keep putting off what they should be doing. And this songwriter is telling you that it's time to think serious about what is happening in this world today. Thank you. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world could keep you apart. What is your answer? to him time after time he has waited before and now he's waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door oh he wants to come in if you take one step to the Savior my friend You'll find his arms open wide. Accept him today and your darkness will end. Within your heart he'll abide. Time after time he's waited before. And now he is waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come in. Time after time, he has waited before, and now he is waiting again to see if you're willing to open the door. Oh, how he wants to come.
That stands we continue our service. God add his blessing to the ministry of music and the spoken word today. 371 in the new hymnal, 572 in the church hymnal. Lift him up, tis he that bids you, let the dying look and live. To all weary, thirsting sinners, living waters will he give. And though once so meek and lowly, yet the prince of heaven was he. And the blind who grow up in darkness through the blood of Christ shall see. 371 in the church, new hymn, that's 520 in the church hymn.
Good afternoon to everyone. Sorry, still morning. Good morning, everyone. I can't hear you. Good morning. Oh, yeah. And there's the glasses blocking me. This morning, we will be looking at the important subject of preparation for camp meeting. And we shall be looking at the divine counsel that has been given with reference to camp attendance and preparation for camp meeting. I want you to follow very carefully as we seek to share this word with you. We welcome one and all who are present, as well as those who are presently watching, as well as those who shall be watching. And we pray that the Spirit of God shall go before, impress hearts and minds to the importance of camp meeting. And trust everyone is present inside that we can get the most out of what God has in store. Cooperation is key. So we look forward to this special camp meeting convocation. And we know that God has rich blessings in store. So it's not going to be a sermon per se, but the sharing of some inspired References to camp meeting and preparation for the same. So welcome one, welcome all. May the blessings of God attend each one of us and open every heart and mind to his word. Let us pray. Our dear God and Father in heaven, we thank you for this privilege of coming to hear your divine inspired counsel with reference to preparation for camp meeting. These holy convocations, you have impressed upon our hearts their importance and the importance of making adequate preparation. For it is from these camp meetings you have said that you pour out your lettering upon your people, lettering of truth in preparation for latter rain of power for your final finishing work. Bless all of us as we seek to understand the preparation that is involved so that we can truly be ready for the showers with our vessels cleaned and turned right side up for the outpouring of your latter rain. Guide and direct all of us as we cooperate with Jesus in his work of, in the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Bless every church member, every family, every youth, every senior. Bless all those who are present. Bless our friends. Bless our enemies. Bless our relatives. We commit all into your hands, even now. Thanking you for hearing and answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Open your Bibles with me to the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, and I'm reading one verse, a part B to that verse. Matthew chapter 25. Verse 10. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 10. Statement says, text says, And while they went to buy, that's a foolish, the bridegroom came, and this is the phrase particularly, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. This group describes the wise virgins that were ready, that had made the preparation, that saw the importance of the urgency of the hour and took adequate 
steps to prepare for the bridegroom's coming. Very important. They that were ready. So in this parable of the wise and the foolish virgin of Matthew chapter 25, preparation and using their time wisely was the critical difference between the two classes. Wise people use their time wisely and don't watch and spend their time with junk. Foolish people squander their time and then scrambling for the emergency. It's like preparation for an exam. Some people like to cram. Some people work better under uh, circumstances that put pressure on them. Some people learn better when they use their time. Some people, in the last minute, did you know that? Some people prefer to study last minute and then going to an exam. It, it, it deals with your preferences and styles of learning. Some people work better under pressure. But then there are others who waste time right up to the end of the time. I remember I had a, an exam at the university and I hadn't done much reading or studying because I was, I was doing other five, um, four other subjects, five. I was doing a complete course part-time. So I was working full time, studying full time, and doing other things, and I didn't have the time. So I asked somebody to take notes for me and for a copy them. I paid them for a copy of notes, and just the day or two before, I went to university early in the morning and study right up and write up and take a break. Went again, eat break, take, went to study again. Right up till twelve the night, the exam was the next day. And I went in the exam, having all of my mnemonics methods of remembering, and I got a B plus. Probably if I studied before, I would have gotten an A, but I didn't have time to study for the exam. But I made preparation in the final hours before the exam. And some people are going to be the 11th hour workers. Some people will come in last minute. And that is not what is adv advocated. It is advocated that we prepare all the while and then make sure you put in that little extra effort at the end. Make sure. So one group was prepared for the emergency. The other was not. They that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. You know, when we were at school, some of us made use of our time wisely. Others squandered the time and then expected results. Those who commit themselves to studying, to researching, to getting to know and understand, and you end up being successful. And that's important. Camp meeting is a preparation for the giving of the final warning message. Camp meeting is a preparation for the outpouring of God's latter rain. And that is the time God wants his people to have their vessels cleaned and turned right side up for the outpouring of the latter rain. Camp meetings, by the way, if you learn a little history of camp meetings, camp meetings were uniquely American institutions that were developed during the early years of the great Advent movement. At that time, there were a new method of evangelism and revival that sprang up all across the country. Since then, camp meetings have been used by local churches and especially reform groups as holy convocation to strengthen and consolidate the believers in the present truth for this time. Of course, we can invite visitors to be present, they will hear the present truth for this time as well. Interestingly, some of the same counsels given in terms of preparation for communion service, did you know that? Some of the same counsels that were given in preparation for communion service is given in reference to preparation for camp meeting convocation, which are both sacred 
meetings. And that's what you hear the spirit of prophecy mentioning. None should absent themselves from these holy convocations. None. Very, very important. And that's the very time that people choose to absent themselves. We have a lot to say on this one. And I'll say it in a short time. Unless we individually and as a church consecrate ourselves, our work will produce very little results. The scripture says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. You see that? That's a, that's a secret right there. If you want God to draw nigh to you, then what must you do? Draw nigh to him. That's a secret. In my growing up years, uh, when I became an Adventist at age 15, I concentrated a lot on devotion. On that morning, devotion. Everything else could be done during the day, reading, research, whatever. But you see that morning, devotion of prayer, meditation, surrendering to God, self-examination. That is where the strength lies. Your commitment, your loyalty. And when people skip breakfast, you get other problems. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. Some people eat breakfast late. Some eat a good meal at lunchtime. But you see that morning breakfast? Very critical. Jesus spent time getting acquainted with his father. The Bible says he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Learned obedience. He became perfect through suffering. He learned a lot through suffering. Scripture is very clear. Now, I'm giving you some counsels here from inspiration. And I thought I should share that. Rather than just, I will, of course, put in one or two others. Here's one coming from Review and Herald, August 15, 1882, paragraph 10. Because this preparation is neglected, these yearly meetings have accomplished but little. And by camp meetings, I don't mean learning to tie knots and hiking and, and, and you know why some of the young people go to camp meetings? I went to many camp meetings. I was director as well. And people come for fun and entertainment. Not understanding the sacredness of camp meetings. The ministers are seldom prepared for labor for to labor for God. There are many speakers, but there are but few earnest laborers for God. So some of this counsel was directed to ministers as well. God wants us all, not only speakers and, and missionary workers, but every person who will attend the camp meeting to make a thorough preparation that we might, as a consecrated instrument, be used in the hands of the master. It is because of these inspired instructions that we have been convicted as leaders of the camp meeting to encourage of each person to make a serious reflection and consecration before attending the camp meeting. If you have never heard these counsels before, now is the time. So God sent a special letter of consecration to his people over a hundred years ago through the messenger of the remnant of how to prepare for our annual camp meeting and holy convocation. Inspired instructions of how to have a life-changing, reforming experience that would even make unbelievers feel the presence of God just by walking on the grounds. That's what inspiration says, you know. Just by walking on the ground, unbelievers felt the presence. By so doing, that proper preparation and consecration for the camp meeting, you will invite the Lord's presence into your homes and holy angels will attend you as you go up to the meeting and their light and presence will press back the darkness of evil. Of evil angels, sorry. Even unbelievers will feel the holy atmosphere as they enter the encampment. Oh, how much is lost by neglecting this important work. You may be pleased with the preaching. You may become animated and revived. 
but the converting, transforming, reforming power of God will not be felt in the heart and the work will not be so deep, thorough, and lasting as it should be. Same review in Herald, August 15. And we ask that each person here listen carefully to this letter as we read it prayerfully, individually, and then to your family as a part of preparation. And if we all follow the counsel, we can have a life-changing experience at this camp meeting, preparing us for the finishing of the work of God. We are just around the corner. The finishing of the work is just around the corner. And we have two classes, wise and foolish, being developed here. Even amongst us, wise and foolish. Some are not just foolish, but they have gone beyond that. They think that what we are, they're not even seeing it as important. And not, I'm not making preparation. They are seeing it as error and false doctrine. So they're calling the work of God the work of the devil. And that's what Korah, Dathan, and Abiram did. Attributing to, say, to God the work of the devil. That's a serious thing. Serious thing. You're closing your probation when you do that. And this can only happen as together we enter into that upper room experience that will this prepare can us for the latter rain and the finishing of the work of God on the earth. Now, in my present truth series, in which I mentioned that there were seven angels in Revelation 14 and not three. Most Adventists are used to him with three angels. They are not three. There are seven in the series and all. And all of them have to do with the finishing of God's word on earth. Starting from William Miller, going right down to the end of time. And the fourth one is on its onward flight right now. He has joined the third. He is on his onward flight. And some people are saying he doesn't exist. The fourth doesn't exist. When inspiration talks about the angel that follows the third, unites his voice with his message, seems to be an addition to the third, right down the line. He adds power and force to his message. That's the fourth angel. It began in 1888, was rejected, came back again, rejected. And now we have a people who have taken all of this message. And by the way, that message... It is also mentioned in Revelation chapter 18, 1 to 4. An angel that comes down from him. We've already proved that that angel represents a movement of God's people on earth. GC 604. Hence the movement represented by the angel coming down and lightening the earth with his glory. Great controversy 604. And some say that this fourth angel doesn't exist. And some are opposed to this angel's work. The angel had to ascend back to heaven and wait his appointed time to return. And now many do not even know what that message was. That could have wrapped up everything in two years. They don't even know what it is. But the camp meetings are supposed to produce and create the atmosphere for that upper room experience. Remember that. I continue, August review and Herald, August 15, 1882, preparation for camp meeting. Our annual camp meetings are of great importance, and all who possibly can should attend them. Not those people plan to be absent during camp meeting, but all who possibly can should attend them. They should feel that the Lord requires this of them. If God's people neglect the privileges which he has provided for them to become strong in him, they will grow weaker and weaker and have less and less desire to consecrate all to him. You heard that statement? From this sacred letter? No, don't get me wrong. Those who want to be present and are willing to be present will be present. And those who don't want to be present will choose not to be present. I'm not talking about those who can't get time off from work and try to occasionally to slip in or what. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those who can and choose to be absent. We have a lot to say on that. 
They're going to drift further and further, weaker and weaker, weaker and weaker. And when they find themselves in a strait, they are led astray. It's interesting. Deception is going to be very subtle in these last days. Somebody sent me a, a letter the other day, a clipping, showing a professor at a university at Pacific Union College saying that the LGBT agenda and so on and being a big gay lesbian is actually a mutation and it is normal and that the church should embrace them and um, because people have mutations of different things and we don't call it sin but that's just a mutation too and it should be accepted as normal and so on accept their lifestyle as an Adventist professor Interesting. The quote continues, the letter continues, the object of this holy convocation is that the brethren may be separated from business cares and burdens and devote a few days exclusively to seeking the Lord. But some of these meetings are far from being what the Lord designed. They should be. The people come unprepared for the visitation of God's Holy Spirit. Did you hear that? While preparing for the meetings, each individual should closely and critically examine his own heart before God. Let's pause there. Now to do that, you have to let God look inside and see what are the defects, what are the faults, you have to let God assess your spiritual condition or diagnose your treatment. How many people like going and enjoy going to get checkups and diagnoses? How many people? Some people would rather not go because they don't want to know what they have and therefore not worry. You know that. Who wants to go and get a checkup? Then to hear that they have cancer of the pancreas or something like it. Who wants to do that? Some people would rather bury their head in the sand and prefer not to be diagnosed or assessed. But that, that Laodicean message is critical. God gives counsel to buy of me. You said you are rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, but you do not know that you do not know. Now that's a bad situation to be in. It's one thing to know that you know. Is another thing that not to know what you should know. But not to know that you don't know is a serious problem. Some people don't even know who they are. Male or female. They don't know. That's interesting. But the inspiration is very clear. We have to critically examine our own heart even before camp meeting. If there have been unpleasant feelings, discord, or strife in families, yes, that exists in families too. It should be one of the first acts of preparation to confess these faults one to another and pray with and for one another. You hear that preparation? That's the same thing we are asked to do for communion service before we partake. Humble yourself before God and make an earnest effort to empty the soul temple of all rubbish, all envyings, all jealousies, all suspicions, all fault finding. And these are very, very subtle. You can be envious and jealous of somebody and don't even know. Peter did not know his own heart. Jesus said, all men, all of you shall forsake me. Jesus said, I will never forsake you. I will follow you to prison and to death. What did Peter not know? He did not know his own heart. And inspiration says, hidden defects were inside of him that circumstances would find into life. 
And he, before he could even finish his sentence properly, he was denying Christ with cursing and swearing. I don't know the man. Using some of those fisherman words that we hear subconsciously when watching things on TikTok. And we justify it. And as soon as I, I, when somebody mentions it to me, I delete it immediately. Why can't people express themselves? If you're a decent person, why can't you express yourself without using those words? I don't want to hear you. I don't care what you have to say that is important. I don't want to. So I tell people on certain chats, if it has any of those words, don't send it. Sometimes it gets things from people who know better. Humble yourself before God and make an earnest effort to empty the soul temple of all rubbish, all envy, jealousies, all suspicions, all fault finding. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you. Oh, and by humbling yourself, I don't mean, well, certain things. Because there are some people who puffed up themselves until their bubble is burst. I'm told of a story of a man who got a very high paying job, a six, seven figure job. And he went into his office, which was uh, transparent. And he sat down in his chair and lifted his foot on the desk, feeling very good. And somebody came at the door and he pretended to go on the telephone, talking an important business transaction. And while he was talking, the person knocking at the door, and he said, signal to the person to hold on. And then he pretended that he was carrying on a conversation, transacting millions of dollars for the business, until he, he said, hold on a minute, and opened the door. Tell the person, come. And the man said, I just came to tell you that the telephone lines are off. That was it. Big bubble. Boom. Burst. Telephone lines are off and he's pretending. That is what will happen to those who cherish pride, envy, fault finding, jealousy, and so on. It comes in different guises. Even religious guises. What a statement. Here's another one. Make a covenant. Make a what? Make a covenant with God to yield yourselves and all your powers to his service. Do not carry this work undone to the camp meeting. If it is not done at home, your own soul will suffer and others will be greatly injured by your coldness, your stupor, your spiritual lethargy. Same letter. Continuing, if we love the things of the world and have pleasure in unrighteousness, our, our fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, we have put a, the stumbling block of our iniquity before our face and have set up idols in our heart. And unless by determined effort we put away them, we shall never be acknowledged as the sons and daughters of God. Same letter. Continue. Here is a work for families to engage in before coming up to our holy convocation. Let the preparation for eating and dressing be a secondary matter. Be a what? Secondary matter. But let deep heart searching commence at home. Pray three times a day and like Jacob be importunate. At home is the place to find Jesus and then take him with you to the meetings and how precious will be the hours you spend there. But how can you expect to feel the presence of the Lord and see his power displayed when the individual work of preparation for that time is neglected? Same review in Herald, August 15, 1882. So we have to make things right with our spouse, our children, or relatives before coming up to the camp meeting. Some people have relatives at church. Some people don't even speak to their neighbors. You know that? You know that? Some people don't speak to their neighbor. 
I'm told of one person, he lived in that area, spoke to none of the, the people in the neighborhood. He died a lonely and a bitter man. Tell Review Herald, by so doing, you will invite the Lord's presence into your homes, and holy angels will attend you as you go up to the meeting, and their light and presence will press back the darkness of the evil angels. The same work of humiliation and heart searching should also go on in the church so that all differences and alienation among brethren may be laid aside before appearing before the Lord at these annual gatherings. Now, people are hearing this right now. They do know that some people, even though they're hearing this right now, will choose to be absent. I know the human mind well. Any little thing turns off people and they feel they can punish the leaders by not attending camp meeting. Yeah? Can't work. Set about with this work in earnest and rest not until it is accomplished. For if you come up to the meeting with your doubts, your murmuring, your disputing, you bring evil angels. You bring what? Evil angels into the camp and carry darkness wherever you go. That's a serious statement. Because this preparation is neglected, these yearly meetings have accomplished but little inspiration. Our annual camp meetings are of great importance and all who possibly can should attend them. See that thing called attendance? That's critical. At school, you have to attend to qualify. You have to get all you can and see what the tutor or the teacher is dwelling on much. And therefore, the questions will come in those areas. They should feel that the Lord requires them this of them. If God's people neglect the privileges which he has provided for them to become strong in him, I read that before, they will grow weaker and weaker and have less and less desire to consecrate all to him. The object of these holy convocation meetings is that the brethren may be separated from business care. I would have mentioned that as well. So we have been told that camp meetings are special seasons for the outpouring of God's latter rain. None should absent themselves from these meetings. We should even plan not to be sick. How do you plan not to be sick? Now you have a big engagement, a graduation coming up, and lo and behold, you begin to feel something in your throat. You begin to start sneezing. You begin to get a temperature. And when you hear the shout, you can't attend. This statement talks about planning not to be sick to miss the camp meeting. How do you do that? This involves building up your immune system in preparation for attending and not missing the camp meeting. It holds the remedy of many evils and problems in the church. Remedy. If I know, listen to this, if I know that a medication is very good for my health, but I'm not taking it, what good is that to me? Huh? If I know that the character of God's message is true, but not developing God's character in me of patience, love, understanding, compassion, what good is that to me? If I know that praying and studying is essential to my spiritual growth, but I'm not finding time to pray or study, what good is that to me? If I know that attending church services Sunday night, Wednesday night prayer meeting or Sabbath services are essential, but not present to reap the benefits, what good is that to me? So knowing these things is, not, is no help. That's what the Spirit of Prophecy talks about. Profession means nothing. Attending camp meetings, convocations for the reception of the latter end, are crucial 
and critical for my preparation for the final crisis. And if I do not make myself available, some people choose not to make themselves available so they can't hear. What good is that to me? Many will be lost simply because they chose not to be present to hear that which would have been eye-openers to their eyes, to their real condition, and some truth that would have drawn them into God's kingdom if they had only been present. And do you know we have to give an account to God for being absent of what we could have heard? You know, inspiration has a statement, what we could have heard but neglected to hear because of our absence. You'll have to give account to God for that too. Not only for what we have heard. Listen to this poignant statement from Great Controversy 597, paragraph 2. Listen to the statement. If light and truth are within our reach and we neglect to improve the privilege of hearing and seeing it, we virtually reject it. Virtually what? Reject it. Light and truth within your reach. Others would have been glad to be present at this camp meeting. We live here and we choose, some choose to be absent. Some choose to not to improve the privilege of hearing and seeing it. Inspiration says we are virtually rejecting it. We are choosing darkness rather than light. What a statement. So we will have to give account for the things that we could have heard, but which we neglected to hear, to be present to hear. Still have to give an account to God. And that's how God sees it. Wasted moments. Listen to things that we'll be judged for. Wasted moments. Loss or unimproved opportunities. Unfulfilled duties. In that chapter called Facing Our Life Record. We will have to give an account to God for these. Can you imagine that? Unfulfilled duties. Are there any duties that are not fulfilling? How about opportunities that I'm not improving? How about my moments? I mentioned just now TikTok. That's a new thing now. TikTok is not, it's not going to take us anywhere. You're very, there, there are people that got good talent and so on. If you have time, if you have time to spare and you want to relax and you want to watch some of these dramatic things that people do, of course, you, you have, that's your choice. But some people not having a knowledge of the prophecies for these last days or the 2300 day prophecy and what it involves and the final preparation and the, the preparation that is needed for present truth to be known so that we can present it preparation for the latter end and the loud cry. And we neglect it by allowing things to take up our time and our attention. And we know what I'm talking about. All of us know what I'm talking about. Things that take up our time and attention. We will have to give an account to God for that. Testimonies, volume 6, page 42. Shares with us this statement. The success of the meeting depends on the presence and power of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And God is more willing to give us the Spirit than we are to receive it. Or that we are to give good gifts to our children. God is more willing to give us. Can you imagine that statement? The father of the prodigal was more willing to receive him than he was to come back home. He didn't even wait for him to come all the way to rehearse what he had thought over in his mind. He ran towards him and met him where he was. And we're going to find that the salvation, past, present, and future is also in that prodigal son in a later study. I made preparation to deal with his past. The father dealt with his past. He dealt with his present. And he, make, he dealt with his future as well. In that one parable. So the success of the meeting depends on the present 
and the power of the Holy Spirit. For the outpouring of the Spirit, every lover of the cause should pray. And as far as lies in our power, we are to remove every hindrance to his working. So apart from saying, we will have to give an account to God for what we could have heard, but neglected to hear by coming late to the camp meeting or not being present. This statement says the success of the meeting depends on the presence and the power. Only the spirit can carry the truth on. Only the spirit has the power to convert and transform. That's a powerful statement there. So camp meetings are special, important occasions for our people. It is designed that at least one week may be given up to seek God without interruption. And we do it during the crop over festival, get the people away from. That, that at least is a way of helping. But some people choose not to be present. It is designed that at least one week may be given up to seek God without interruption. The whole heart should be engaged in this service that a better knowledge of the scriptures may be obtained, that the plan of salvation may be better understood, and that there may be a deeper realization of what salvation means and what it will cost to meet the high requirement of God. Coming down to a close here. Review and Herald, June 26, 1888. Listen to this statement. The object of our camp meeting is to arouse the mind to a more vivid sense of the solemnity of these things. Grasp the truth as it is presented to you for the souls, for your soul's sake. Cherish every new idea. You have not studied it yet. It is presented to you rather than oppose it or challenge it. Go and study first. Do like the Bereans. Go and check to see if these things are so. Cherish every new idea. Every divine enlightenment. Lest you let the truth slip from your heart as water from a leaky vessel. Seek to walk in every ray of light that comes to you through the ministration of the word. What a statement. Strengthen the meeting. Listen to that. Strengthen the meeting all you possibly can by being present with your families. Put forth extra exertion to attend the gathering of God's people. And listen to this shocking one. Brethren and sisters, it would be far better for you to let your business suffer. Pardon me? Pardon me? Far better for you to let your business suffer than to neglect the message God has for you. Make no excuse that will keep you from gaining every spiritual advantage possible. What a statement. Scripture says in Revelation 3, 5, to him that overcometh. To him that what? Overcometh. Will I grant to sit with me in my throne? To him that overcometh, I will not blot out his name out of the book of life. To him that overcometh. And the interesting thing is people, is, people are trying hard to overcome. Habits, practices, trying hard. And that's not the solution. God has already, in, in the work of Calvary, already satisfied the just demands of the law, already paid the penalty. Some people don't want to accept that. Already paid the penalty, already redeemed all humanity in Jesus Christ, already. The Bible says that everything is settled. Just come to the wedding. All things are ready. Come to the wedding. God is all out to save. God is what? All out to save. Yes, there will be millions. You may say a few, but there will be millions that will be saved. Did you know that? It's small compared to the people that will be lost, but millions will be saved. 
and apart from those who are saved, there will be millions of martyrs who would have died. So how many millions we got so far? Can you imagine that? God is all out to save. And those who are simple-minded and honest and accept God's work, finished work at Calvary 2,000 years ago, where he exhausted the penalty of, for sin for man so that none need be lost. God has made it difficult for us to be lost. Did you know that? And easy to be saved. Did you know that? Because there's more power in grace than there is in sin. The only way that men will be lost is by their wrestling and fighting themselves out of the hand of Christ, rejecting his full atonement, atoning sacrifice, and there's nothing more. There's nothing more that God can do for them. The inspiration of the little book, Steps of Christ, says, Heaven's ladder is let down in every man's way. Whatever direction you are going, heaven's ladder is let down in front of you. And the only way you're going to be lost, steps to Christ tells us, is by taking that ladder and pushing it aside and plunge headlong into sin and over the cliff where Christ's spirit cannot reach you. I tell you. We got to go against the spirit. We got to go against our conscience. We got to go against godly counsel from parents, teachers, preachers, rejected the study of God's word and deliberately rebel. Against God's law. No wonder the Bible says. The wise man says. The way of the transgressor is hard. God told Saul. It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. I remember the days fellas fought. Near a dunk street. And one of the things they tried to do. Is to get the person into that dunk street. Can you imagine that? Full of pricks. And the person fell you know, straight back into the dunk. Couldn't move after that. Hard for thee to kick against the prick. But Jesus said, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Scripture says, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And he can be found at camp meeting. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And of course, the rest of it said, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thought and let him return unto me for I will abundantly pardon and restore him. Brethren, I appeal, I appeal to each one of us present, each one of us who are present here, to make camp meeting a priority and a must in your schedule and seek God with your whole heart and he will be found of you. This is just a thought I wanted to share from a sacred counsel and appeal that was given to the church back then of the preparation, essential preparation for camp meeting. You can choose to discard it. You can choose to argue with it. You can choose to accept it, whichever way. But God demands a response. We have to give a response. And after camp meeting, like Judas, when he rejected Jesus Christ, it was night to his soul. Camp meetings are not convocations you can come to play and skylark with. Every single individual here in the hearing of my voice has to give an account to God for what we have heard this morning. Prepare, come early. Come prepared with a notebook to get the most out of it. Even when you're at home in your convenience, do not lay down in the bed with a pillow listening to the lectures. Y'all know the way, right? Sit up, take notes, be alert. Even on Zoom in the afternoon segment. Draw night to God. And he will draw nigh to you. May the Lord bless his word to our hearts this morning. May the Holy Spirit carry the truth home and awaken us from our stupor before it is forever.
too late. Let us pray. As a matter of fact, we're going to sing our closing song for Take time to be holy, Elder Messiah, before we pray. And use that opportunity to consecrate yourselves via those words before we have our prayer. Closing prayer. Number 603, the church hymnal, 500, Seventh day Adventist hymnal. Take time to be holy. Speak oft with thy Lord. Abide in him always and feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak, forgetting in nothing his blessing to seek. I understand that some people had come in. After I've given the welcome this morning, wherever you are, may you have received a blessing from being with us today. And we bid you welcome and trust that you will feel welcome at any time. We open at 9.30 every Sabbath morning. Feel welcome to come or join us on our Zoom meetings or on our YouTube meetings. Feel free to do so. May God bless you richly as you take your leave of us today. Five, 603 in the old, 500 in the new. Gracious God and Father, you have spoken. Your divine counsels have been delivered. We pray that every honest heart and soul may respond and put into action and the principles that we have heard. 
lest we let them slip. Lest every person here present cause your truth to vibrate. May we see the importance of preparation that we may become wise virgins, having the extra oil in our vessels with our lamps, that when the bridegroom shall come our call, we who are ready will go in with him to the marriage and the door will be shut. Bless everyone who is, is present, those who are listening overseas, and those who will listen later on. May these truths cause our minds to stir, and may our hearts be warmed as we see that you have much in store and planned for us and to be among your loud Christ servant, initial loud Christ servant that will start the ball rolling, that will pass on the baton to others during the loud cry and cause your people to join the fold. You have said you've had other sheep you have which are not of this fold. They shall join and become one with the shepherd and with his people. Thank you for being with us. Continue to teach us. You have much in store for us. Help us to choose to be present so that we can gather all the blessings that you have prepared even for us. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for ministering to every soul and continue to abide with us. We thank you for hearing, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Basket. Come and give you not my food basket. You, no. No.